Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. Am I the asshole for suspecting my husband and best friend of a secret affair? I, 31F, have a deep suspicion that something unusual is happening between my husband, 33M, and my closest friend, Maria, 30F. My husband thinks I'm just imagining things and is upset with me for not trusting him enough. Can you tell me if what's happening is just in my head, or do you think the situation from last weekend seems suspicious? Maria and I have been best friends since college. She has always been extroverted while I'm more introverted. Maria has always been a bit flirtatious and dramatic. She had numerous boyfriends slash sexual partners during college and is very attractive, which made me feel invisible next to her, I struggle with weight issues. I've always felt overshadowed by her. I was quite shy, and my husband was the first person I ever dated. Maria used to tease me about only having loved one guy in my life. As we grew older, Maria still hadn't had a truly long-term relationship. Now it feels like things have reversed, and she keeps telling me how lucky I am to have such an ambitious and reliable husband. About six months ago, my husband came to me and said he felt Maria was flirting with him. He doesn't like Maria, but tolerates her for my sake. At a dinner party, Maria acted very flirtatious towards my husband. She laughed loudly at all his jokes, complimented his physique, and touched his shoulders and arms. My husband told me he was uncomfortable with her behavior and asked me to talk to Maria. I was upset and had a conversation with Maria. She was angry with me and said she had known my husband for over a decade and considered him like a brother. She felt my husband was trying to ruin our friendship because he didn't like her. I believed she was sincere and let it go. Maria soon joined our gym because she wanted to do yoga with me. However, she spent more time in the weight room where my husband works out. Again, my husband commented that she was always dressed scantily in the gym and asked him to show her around. Maria complained that my husband was rude and unhelpful. I sided with her and told my husband to be more helpful and kind to her since she's my best friend. My husband said he would try harder. Gradually I noticed they were becoming closer and working out together. I wanted to play it cool, but I felt jealous. So, here's what happened last weekend. Maria invited a group of her friends over for a birthday party at her apartment. There were seven guests, including my husband and me. Maria kept pushing tequila on everyone. Eventually most of us were drunk. Maria sat next to my husband and was flirting with him, but I saw my husband wasn't reciprocating, so I didn't pay much attention. Maria insisted we stay at her place and my husband and I slept in the guest room. Three other guests, her colleagues, one male and two female, slept on the sofa in the living room. I was drunk, and the last thing I remember was my husband helping me to the guest room. When I woke up in the middle of the night, I found myself alone in bed. I heard some moaning from outside. I quickly searched for my phone in the dark. In the process, I knocked something off the nightstand onto the floor. The noise stopped, and I heard a door open and close outside. I got up quickly to see where my husband was. In the hallway, I saw him dressed only in jeans and no shirt. I asked him where he had been and he said he went to the bathroom and asked if I was okay. I said I was, and he came to sleep next to me. He was sweating. I asked where his shirt was, and he said the heater was too high and he felt hot. His shirt was on a chair next to the bed. I lay down but could hardly sleep afterward. I got up early and went to Maria's room, finding her alone, completely naked. I told her we were about to leave and she got up to see us off. I kept this to myself, and when we got home and my husband went to shower, I immediately checked his phone. I didn't find any messages between him and Maria. I spent the whole day thinking about it and eventually confronted my husband about it that night. He was quite angry with me and said he hated Maria and the only reason he put up with her was because of me, I told him about the moaning sounds, and he said he heard something similar when he was in the bathroom but thought it was coming from the living room. He was still mad at me for accusing him of something so terrible and told me that if I was truly that insecure, I should cut off my friendship with Maria. He also said he would never be in the same room with Maria again. I don't know what to do. On one hand, I know my husband would never cheat on me. But I can't shake the suspicions from my mind. I keep imagining my husband and Maria together in her bed. Am I being unreasonable for confronting my husband and accusing him of cheating based on what I saw without any concrete evidence? How can I find out what really happened? If I confront Maria and accuse her, she'll just get angry at me too. I don't know much about her colleagues to trust their word. I just feel foolish for trying to foster a friendship between my husband and Maria. So much has happened in the past month, and my mental health is at its lowest due to these betrayals. 
However, I think I now understand what happened that night. I'm sorry for the long post. So, the next day, when my husband and I were at Maria's place for her birthday party, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had happened between them. I'm not proud, but I checked my husband's phone and all his messaging apps. I only found a short conversation between him and Maria on Facebook Messenger. Maria thanked him for coming to her birthday party and for a great night. She had sent him a photo of them hugging at the end of the night after I had fallen asleep. My husband told Maria that I suspected something had happened between them and asked her to talk to me. Maria told him she would. Maria called me the next day and said I was crazy and she would never think of doing anything like that to me. She seemed convincing, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something had happened. I told her why I suspected them, and she called me crazy and said my mind was making up things that didn't exist. I also mentioned that I had seen the photo of her with my husband after I fell asleep and that she should keep her distance from him. I decided to distance myself from her, as I no longer trusted her as a friend. We also changed our gym times to avoid running into her. About a week later, she texted my husband on Facebook Messenger saying they should tell me the whole truth. My husband kept asking her what she was referring to, but she kept saying she felt guilty. My husband came to me and said Maria was messaging him, and he wasn't sure what she was hinting at. He repeatedly assured me that nothing happened between them that night. I told him I had read their secret messages on Facebook Messenger. He confused me, calling me insecure and saying Maria was trying to mess with my head. Eventually, I decided to go to Maria's house and ask her what was going on. Initially, Maria said she didn't want to talk about it. However, she eventually broke down and told me what happened. She told me that during the birthday party, my husband kept staring at her. When they realized I was too drunk, he took me to the bedroom and then went back to the living room. At this point, he sat next to Maria and kept touching her legs playfully. Maria was also very drunk, and they decided to end the night together after 30 minutes. Maria said my husband followed her into her room and began undressing her, and they were intimate with each other. She told me she was too drunk to consent to anything and felt like he was essaying her. She kept quiet to keep the peace, but it troubled her deeply. I asked if she was sure because she had been so drunk that night, and she said that even though she was drunk, she remembered every detail. I confronted my husband, but he continued to insist that what he said was true, and Maria never liked him and was treating me like a fool. He was so angry with me that he left and is now staying in a nearby hotel. He keeps calling me and asking me to trust him, but I don't know how I can trust him now. I never expected him to do something like this. Maria has also tried to talk to me and asked me to support her. However, I don't know if I can see either of them right now. I'm just trying to cope with the situation and plan to stay with my parents for a few days until my husband and I can come to a resolution about our future. I know many of you may think I'm crazy from my previous post, but deep down, I knew something was wrong and never expected my life to suddenly turn out like this. At first, I didn't know who to trust and thought my friend was telling the truth. My husband is upset because I don't trust him and has moved out to a hotel. After posting this update, I read the comments until 4 a.m. and cried nonstop. I let my insecurities and crazy trust issues with Maria get the better of me when clearly my husband was telling the truth. I'm sorry for the long post. You have helped me a lot and may have saved my marriage. I'm working on improving my insecurities with therapy. Thank you so much for your advice. Story 2. Am I the asshole for triggering my husband's affair partner's miscarriage? I'm struggling to figure out where to start or end this story. I can't talk to anyone I know about it because I feel like a terrible person, yet I also feel justified at the same time. This may sound like a story made up, but it's real and I'm just in pain and need a place to share it all. I, if 36, have been with my husband, M39, for over a decade. Early on, I had to have a hysterectomy due to health issues and told him that if he wanted kids, we should break up. He insisted that he was okay with not having children and didn't want any. In every other way, we seemed perfect for each other. A few years into our marriage, we even had the chance to adopt a baby girl from an unplanned pregnancy in the family. I was thrilled, but he still didn't want kids, so the baby was adopted elsewhere. Not being a mother was heartbreaking for me, but I came to terms with it. Recently my husband began acting strangely. You know how it is when someone you love starts to change. He came home late, avoided sex, and became distant. He denied anything was wrong, but I could tell he was lying. Whenever I tried to talk to him about it, he'd accuse me of being crazy and controlling. So I went through his phone and found evidence of a long-term affair. 
I'm not proud of snooping, but I needed peace of mind. His lover, F26 or 27, whom he introduced to me as his cousin, was pregnant, less than two months along. They were discussing marriage after he divorced me. He admitted he didn't want a divorce because he'd lose the house, which I entirely financed. He was also using our joint account, which I contributed to significantly more as I earned much more, to pay for her rent and medical expenses. When I confronted him, he admitted to the affair and that she was pregnant. The situation became tense. I tried to blame him and not her, but after a lot of tears and arguments, I lost control and told them I hoped they'd lose the baby. I regret saying that. The next day he moved out, and I don't know where they're living now. A few weeks later, she miscarried. They blamed me and thought I was responsible. She came to our house, slapped me, slammed my head against the wall, and kicked me I wasn't seriously hurt. He didn't physically harm me but didn't stop her either. Yes, I was foolish to let them into my house, but I was in a strange mental state and didn't expect her to attack me. Maybe I deserved it. I might feel the same if someone said something like that about my unborn child and caused its loss. I won't file a lawsuit because it's not an option in my country, and maybe I deserve to be hit for what I said. I just want to know if I was a terrible person, and if so, how terrible. After all this, my in-laws discovered that my husband and I were living apart, since he also stopped sending them money. They called me, and I told them everything honestly, including what I said. My in-laws fully supported me. They threatened to cut ties with their son because of his infidelity and were also angry about the shame he caused them. They told him the only way he could make it up to them was by apologizing and compensating me. I'm grateful to them. They also informed my parents and reassured them that they would support me no matter what. I've been staying with my in-laws since then. Many of you were right. She was never pregnant and never had a miscarriage. She couldn't provide any evidence of either. According to my mother-in-law, I think my husband only realized she was lying about the pregnancy after he left me. It turns out she really is a distant relative of my husband. So at least he wasn't lying about that. She seemed to have begged my in-laws not to tell her parents, but they did anyway. The news got out, and now she's embarrassed about premarital sex, especially with a married man. I don't know the specifics about her, but I think her parents have kept her confined at home except for essential trips. My parents are too old to offer much advice. They're reassured that my in-laws are on my side and are okay with whatever I decide to do. My husband and I are still not reconciled, but I still love him. I need time to heal from this and a proper apology, which I haven't received yet. But once I get that, I might be inclined to give him another chance. I think right now he's resenting me for the backlash he received, he probably expected me to endure it all as I used to, and he's also upset that his parents are supporting me. But ultimately, I hope he'll realize his mistakes. Story 3. AITA for spending a few days at work to teach my husband a lesson. I have a 12-year-old son and a 13-month-old son. Before the pandemic, I worked part-time, attended school part-time, and took care of the house and kids when I wasn't doing the other two things. Since the pandemic started, I've become a stay-at-home mom while still attending school and managing the house and kids. Now that schools have reopened and my older son is attending classes online, I've been helping a lot with that too. I've set a pretty strict schedule for myself to ensure I complete all the household chores and schoolwork for both my son and myself each day. One day last week, I had a migraine, and nothing I did could alleviate the pain. Sometime after 3 p.m., after my older son had finished school and the baby was down for a nap, I lay down on the couch to try and ease the migraine. It worked. My husband came home while I was sleeping, and in a bad mood yelled at me, saying I did nothing all day except sleep, eat, and get fat. I tried to explain that I wasn't feeling well and that's why I was napping. He said that was just an excuse and asked how I would like it if he worked all day and came home to find me sleeping on the couch. I said I would assume he was tired or not feeling well. My husband took a few days off work. I arranged to do some errands with a friend. I left a detailed daily schedule for him to follow. On the first day, he called me 20 times because he couldn't handle our older son's homework, the baby's needs, and couldn't even go to the bathroom without one of them needing something. On the second day, he called me 10 times with the same complaints. Both days he ended up sleeping on the couch because he was exhausted from trying to keep up with the kids and the housework. On the third day I went out, he showed up at my friend's place with the kids and left them there, without saying a word to me or my friend. 
Luckily, my friend didn't mind. When I got home that Tuesday evening, he was sleeping on the couch. I let him sleep. I mowed the lawn, weeded the garden, cleaned the house, cooked dinner, I tried to wake him up for dinner. But he refused to get up, bathed the kids and got them ready for bed before he finally woke up. My husband did the bare minimum to take care of the house and kids while I was away. He accused me of doing this to make him look like a bad father. I told him no, I did it to teach him a lesson, that just because he doesn't see me actively doing something when he gets home doesn't mean I'm not busy all day. It all started because he wouldn't accept that I had a migraine and could barely function that day. Fortunately, my older son knows what he needs to do for schoolwork and only occasionally needs a little help. The baby wakes up at 7 a.m., but takes a nap at 12 p.m., sleeping for three to four hours. Am I the asshole for trying to make my husband see what I do every day? I told my husband I wanted a separation, not a divorce because I wanted to try therapy before making that decision. I said I didn't feel appreciated for everything I do daily. I also told him he needed to participate in therapy if he wanted a chance to save our marriage. We could go together or separately, but I had already scheduled my appointment. The kids and I are staying with a friend, and I'm paying a bit of rent. I also clean and help her with her small shop when needed. I take care of the kids most of the time. When my husband is at work, the kids are with me. Three nights a week, they stay with him, usually Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, depending on his work schedule. We've had two online therapy sessions with a marriage counselor, and he's also seeing an individual counselor as am I. In the weeks that followed, I noticed a difference in how my husband talked to and treated me. Whether it will last is another matter. He hasn't always been the ungrateful and irritable person depicted in my earlier post. There was a time when he genuinely appreciated what I did and would never have said hurtful things to me. I'm not sure when things started to change or when I began to believe that his words and actions were acceptable. We both have a long way to go to get back to normal. I have hope for him, but I'll be okay if it doesn't work out. I truly love my husband and want to go home to him. Some mutual friends who know the whole story have texted me, saying they've also noticed a change in his behavior. One friend pointed out that he's not drinking as much as before. But he also doesn't want to be at home. According to this friend, my husband complains that the house is too quiet and doesn't feel like home. Story 4. AITA for refusing to make my fiancé pick a different best man, even though his best man used to bully my brother? My fiancé and Jack have been best friends since childhood, having grown up next door to each other. Although my fiancé attended a private school and didn't go to the same school as us. I met my fiancé while we both worked at a restaurant, and we've been dating for four years. My family, including my brother, loves my fiancé. They've bonded well, even going on a guy's a fishing trip together before the pandemic. I've met Jack too, and though he was really mean to my brother when we were kids, he's always been nice to me. I'm not fond of Jack for the way he treated my brother, but I respect the close bond he shares with my fiancé. The problem. After our engagement, we were discussing the bridal party, and my fiancé insisted that Jack be his best man. Jack has supported him through some tough times, and my fiancé was unwavering on this point. I tried to talk to my brother privately about Jack being the best man and offered him the joint role with our dad to walk me down the aisle so he could feel included. However, he found out before I could talk to him because my mom mentioned it. He was furious, saying he wouldn't attend the wedding if Jack was there, and rejected the idea of walking me down the aisle, seeing it as a pity position, since Jack was getting a special role. I didn't realize Jack would be such a problem, because my brother had previously attended my fiancé's birthday party where Jack was also present. AITA if I refuse to make my fiancé change his best man? Quick edit. My fiancé, brother and Jack are all around 24-25 years old. The bullying happened when they were between 10 to 14 years old, and mainly involved name-calling and excluding my brother from playing with them. When I realized my fiancé and Jack were best friends, we had a big conversation about it. My fiancé didn't justify Jack's past behavior and they talked about it. Jack assured my fiancé that he's changed and grown up. While I'm not overly friendly with Jack, he's willing to apologize to my brother if my brother's open to it, but my brother has refused any contact with Jack. I genuinely thought the distance between them was okay. I realize now that I was naive, especially since they've been around each other before at my fiancé's birthday parties. I assume giving my brother an important role would be sufficient, but clearly, it's not. I'm now trying to find any solution. Update After posting, 
I reached out to my parents, asking them to help facilitate a conversation with my brother. I promised to listen without interrupting. My brother agreed to meet as long as I stayed silent. During the meeting, my brother expressed his hurt. He felt replaced by Jack at the wedding and thought my fiancé should have chosen him over Jack as the best man. The bullying he endured from Jack made him feel inferior, and now seeing Jack as the preferred best man over him reignited those feelings. I broke my silence rule to apologize sincerely. My fiancé and I discussed the wedding and what my brother had said. We couldn't find a solution that made both of us happy, so we decided to take a break from the stress. Jack visited during this time and, sensing something was wrong, found out about my brother's refusal to attend the wedding. Jack, understanding the situation, told my fiancé he would step down as best man. He didn't want us to start our marriage on a bad note and felt this was his karma for being a bully. We respected Jack's decision, although my fiancé was upset. We informed my family that Jack was no longer in the wedding, and my brother agreed to come. Things seemed okay until we met up with my family again. My brother, speaking alone with my fiancé, trashed Jack and asked if he could be the best man now that Jack was out. My fiancé explained that Jack had stepped down to make my brother comfortable and walked out after more harsh words were exchanged. My fiancé and I had a frank discussion afterward. We've decided not to have a wedding anymore, it's too much hassle. If we do get married, we'll elope. We need more time to fix ourselves and our relationships with our families. We might take some time apart if things don't improve. Despite all this, my fiancé is still the man I thought I'd spend my life with.